the court issued a protective order in order to shield him from his own mother's erratic behavior. Hey, all your parents going through a custody battle, whether it's a divorce, paternity, or a legitimation action, navigating the complexities of child custody can be very daunting, especially when you're already dealing with the emotional toll of a divorce or other family law situation. So J.D. Vance's upbringing is a prime example of how important the best interest of the child is when judges make custody decisions, not only in Georgia, where we live, but all over the country. J.D. grew up in a very tumultuous environment with his parents' relationship consumed with conflict and instability. As his parents' marriage fell apart, JD's life was turned upside down. This happens to kids all the time. Now, in an effort to protect JD from the chaos at his home, his grandparents stepped in and eventually they gained custody of him. JD's mother struggled with substance abuse and his father was often absent, and that left JD without a stable home environment. So the court's primary focus was the best interest of JD, which led to the issuance of a protective order to keep him safe from his own mother's unpredictable behavior, and the court granted custody of JD to his grandparents, who could provide the stability and the care that every child needs, not just JD, but every child needs that kind of stability. And if you've seen the movie Hillbilly Elegy or read the book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see how crucial the court's focus on the best interests of the child was for Janie's well-being, right? Now, let's break down what Janie's story can teach us about child custody and the use of temporary protective orders in Georgia to keep kids safe. In any custody battle, like I've told you many times before in every video, the primary concern of the court is the best interest of the child. Remember that, in every video, it's gonna be the best interest of the child. So this means ensuring the child's safety, stability, physical and emotional well-being. In JD's case, his grandmother was able to provide a stable home environment that his parents couldn't provide at that time. Now, when determining custody, the court will look at each parent's ability to care for the child, their living situation, and any potential risks to the child's well-being, and then they'll make a decision based on that criteria. So now consider the importance of temporary protective orders in this process. These orders are put in place to protect somebody from immediate physical harm or danger. Apply that to JD's case, the court issued a protective order in order to shield him from his own mother's erratic behavior, and that ensured his safety during a, a critical period in his childhood, really. If you're facing a situation where your child's safety is truly at risk, a temporary protective order can provide the necessary protection while the court makes a more permanent decision regarding custody and parenting time or the elimination of that custody and parenting time from the parent or parents who are causing those issues. Now, what about the granting of custody to third parties? Well, sometimes neither parent can provide a suitable environment for the kids to grow up in, and then the court has to decide who to grant custody to, maybe a relative or another third party who could provide that stability that the children need and have a right to. That was definitely the case for JD, whose grandmother stepped in and was able to provide the care and stability he needed. If you find yourself unable to care for your child, identifying a responsible and loving family member who can step in temporarily or permanently can be in your child's best interest. In the situation we're talking about today, JD's mother was in no position to be able to make that decision on who would be that best person to care for her child, so that necessitated that the court get involved and make that decision for her, taking into account what was in JD's best interest. And again, this happens to kids all the time. It just happens to be that now with current political situation and that the book he wrote, his story is coming to light. And so I decided to do a video on that. It is essential to understand that these decisions are never easy for parents or courts to make, but they are designed to be made with the children's best interests at heart. So if you're dealing with uh, a familiar situation like I'm talking about here, here are three crucial points to keep in mind. First, always prioritize your children's safety and well-being, whether it's through a temporary protective order to protect the child from actual harm or the granting of custody to a third party. The goal is to ensure that your children are in a safe and stable environment and get them out of harm's way. Get them safely removed from a parent who could do them harm or put them in danger. Secondly, be prepared for the emotional challenges that come with these decisions. It's not easy to step back and let somebody else take custody of your children, but sometimes it's necessary for their well-being. Seek support from family, friends, or a professional to help you navigate through this difficult time. Lastly, communicate openly and honestly with your child. They need to understand that these decisions are being made out of love and concern for their well-being. Reassure them that they are not to blame for the situation and that you're doing everything you can to ensure their safety and their happiness and their well-being. If you're facing the complexities of a child custody, temporary protective orders, or granting of custody to a third party, remember that you're not alone. So reach out to an experienced family law attorney for guidance and make decisions that prioritize your children's best interests. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. 
Be sure to click subscribe, like, follow, and turn on the alerts so that you'll get notified when we post our newest videos. And please share these videos and leave us comments and ask us questions. Also, join our Facebook group at Georgia Divorce and Custody, and I'll see you again on the next video.